Biz News. I'm Elizabeth Lee, together with Tony Lopez. Tonight we have for our guest, British Ambassador to the Philippines, Ambassador Asif Ahmad. Welcome to our show, Ambassador. Well, thank you for having me on your show. Good evening. And you speak seven languages, one of which is Tagalog. Oh, kunti lang po. Kunti, kunti lang. lang. <laughs> Magandang gabi, no? <laughs> Magandang gabi. <po. laughs> Maybe you, you, you put some of us to, to shame in your Tagalog. Very formal Tagalog. No, but I've tried to learn more uh, what I call streetwise Tagalog. Mm -hmm. So I use Twitter, uh, which I'm more fluent in. But so many people here speak to me in English that my Tagalog is actually is getting worse day by day. <laughs> uh, my... my uh, my teacher in, in London is watching me with, with some growing frustration. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but how did you learn how to speak uh, Tagalog? No, what happened yeah. was that our, our foreign minister, who is a great believer in the tradition of diplomacy, he recalled a period where you know, most of our diplomats could speak a language because you know, trans communications were very difficult at that time and uh, you didn't have access to so many uh, English speakers. And he has decided that wherever it, another language is spoken, we should at least make an effort. So before I was uh, moved here from after serving in Thailand as ambassador, uh, I spent six months with a teacher in London, just trying to six months six huh? months just trying to 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 speak. Now my ability to understand uh, <coughs> Filipino is far superior to my ability to speak. Mm. So people should be very tell very us careful. Of, of an incident where we're actually you met a, a lady that you. And then she said something, and you understood what she said. Oh, yes. This was at a diplomatic uh, reception here in, in Manila, where uh, I'd been introduced to a number of people, and uh, these two ladies who, were, who had seen me before, one had sort of uh, forgotten who I was. Uh, <laughs> and then as I was walking past, I could hear it by, in Yesha, you know, Sinoba Shia. Sinoba Shia. So I said, uh, I came back, and I said, uh, Oh, nakalimutan mo ako. So she was a bit uh, shocked. Shocked, but uh, you understand. Yes. So, but it was friendly. Uh, but uh, what, what, what's useful is is you know if you uh, don't speak a language in in a country like here, where quite often somebody will speak to me in, or I hear half of the sentences in English and the other half is in. In Filipino, then if you don't understand any of it, then I think you've, you're only listening with one ear. Yes. So uh, I'm glad that I spent this this time. I will never be fluent, mm. uh, uh, but I hope I will be competent. Mm. <laughs> that means you also learn some Thai. No, my posting to Thailand was slightly unusual, um, because the ambassador we had then left halfway through his posting, and we at that time did not have anybody senior enough to go to Thailand uh, with the language. So whilst one of my colleagues was being trained. Uh, I was sent there because I was the regional head for ASEAN, Australia, and New Zealand. Uh, mm -hmm. So I knew about the country. Yes. So I was sent as a country expert to Thailand yeah. as ambassador, not as a Thai speaker. Uh -huh. Although uh, many people accused me uh, as my, was, my stay there uh, continued that I was actually understanding more than they actually said to me. <laughs> <laughs> when did you start your stint here, Ambassador? I came here in July, July. of last year. Mm. Uh, so you stay for three years at least? Uh, well, I hope it'll be four, uh, unless I upset you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, how do you uh, find the country so far? Well, f thankfully for me, this is not my first experience of the Philippines. I'm because, not your uh, first. You've been here before. I've traveled here before. Yeah. Over the last ten years, I've been here maybe six times. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, originally, I was the director for trade and investment for all of Asia Pacific, yeah. from Afghanistan to Fiji. Mm. And, of course, the Philippines was part of, as part of ASEAN was an important country. Yeah. So I came here... Uh, ten years ago. Uh, then I was the regional head for foreign <coughs> policy covering uh, ASEAN countries and Australia, New Zealand, the Pacific. Mm. And that gave me the excuse to come here. So I came here with a um, uh, foreign office minister. I met President Aquino actually at the Malakanyang yes. as, a, as a foreign office diplomat, not just mm. as an ambassador. Mm. I saw him again when he came to Thailand to visit the prime minister there. So yeah. I have, if you like, growing familiarity with, mm -hmm. with the Philippines. And it, it's been, what has been interesting is that as I've gone around introducing myself to people, yes. people have come up to me and said, I thought it was you. And we remembered that we had met you know, at a previous reception or I when they had before. come. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so it's nice you know, when you start an assignment mm -hmm. where you're actually, you have some people who are, I now regard as, as yeah. friends over a long period. Yeah. And they're a good source of advice. They speak to me quite frankly, 
and I can also lean on them sometimes if something's not very clear, if I don't really understand the intricacies of what's going on. Yes. Uh, because I have, a, if you like, a trusting relationship, mm. they, they'll feel comfortable talking so to me. So you feel very, very at home here in the Philippines? It very much so. Mm. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, you know, living here is, is very easy. Uh, I don't just say living here as an expat, uh, mm. because actually, to be honest with you, I'm more uh, comfortable in a palenque than in a shopping mall. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yes, uh, because I just love the atmosphere, I love what's going on, I love the fact that some child is being looked after by another child, and uh, the people are sitting around in a, tr in a tricycle waiting to go you home. Do you shopping in the palenque? Uh, yes, I do, you because do fish, I, you I tell do you fish why. Marketing. Yes, I tell you why. Because I'm a great lover of fish and, yeah. and tropical fruit. In yeah. fact, at home, I have banned the use of foreign fruits uh, for my personal use yeah. because it, Very good. it's foolish for me to sit here and have apples brought in from Europe yeah. or something like that. So you lower your carbon we footprint too. among the too. best fruits yeah. in the world. Mm -hmm. huh? Mango, yeah, artis, durian. Yes, and it yeah. needs to become more famous around the world uh, because yeah. it is as good yeah. as any that I've had. Do you before. haggle? I'm terrible. You're I'm terrible. terrible at, 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 you know, I'll start <laughs> by saying makano ito, and then then they say some price, and I say, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, what you can do is tell them to put it on a calculator. Yes, my wife is much better. <laughs> and at, say uh, how. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, we're going to continue this discussion. We'll be right back. You're watching Biz News. senior UK diplomat ever assigned to Manila because you said a while ago that you're also head of the region. Yeah. The significance of that is that uh, we decided uh, about two, three years ago that we needed to change the strength of our relationship with certain countries and yeah. we drew up a list of about 35 countries around the world uh, yeah. and the Philippines is one of them. Internally within the office we, we described a country like yours as an emerging power which is not just economic but in terms of its social strength, its population yeah. and its contribution to, to the world. And by engaging at, a, at this level, and we had the foreign secretary here only last week uh, yes. and the degree of interest our prime minister has shown uh, during the typhoon, it shows that we are stepping up our, our engagement in this region and the, the importance of the Philippines has not been lost in all of this. So yes, in some sense it's not about my personal yeah. Ranking, it's it's actually about our intention and how we want to engage with. So, how people. does the Philippines compare now to to ASEAN? You place great importance on the Philippines. That yes, I mean let's let's start with some of your headlines. Uh, mm -hmm. The the president the other day announced that your growth this year is at 7.2 percent. Yeah, 7 now that is phenomenal. That is second only to China, China yes. and China comes from a very different base. Now. Uh, when a country is growing that, that fast, it creates a whole range of opportunities, opportunities. challenges, how yeah. you manage growth, is the growth going to be inclusive, how do you deal with setbacks. Right. Um, you know, when you're, when you're talking about fruits, if you start to really scale up your, your agriculture and export, oh, yeah. then, you know, the, the, the sanitary requirements of the EU, uh, the, the way... Strika. And also changing them to, to, to foreign that, taste. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, yes. how do you fix all of that? Now that basically means that with that growth comes a lot of uh, other complications and opportunities. And I think we, by working with a, a trusted friend like the United Kingdom, many businesses mm. here will, will prosper. So how do you take advantage of that uh, opportunity from your point of view? In a number of ways. Firstly, we start from a very strong base. Uh, the UK is the largest investor in the Philippines from the European Europe. Union. So that means we already have a place here. We're not starting from zero, uh, which would be a very tough place to be. I think it's on the trade in, uh, side that we can step up quite significantly because mm. I think You're it's... You're fourth, I think. Are you fourth? One, huh? one billion uh, Yeah, which is, which is good, but pound. it's mm. really... The, I've been told I have to double yeah. but the, uh -huh. the, the trade between the two countries before I leave. Yeah. Uh, you have to double, That's excellent. double it. Can you do it? <laughs> uh, double it to two trillion pounds? Well, put it this way. Uh, when I... And when I started as ambassador in Thailand, uh, our trade was growing at about 10-15% uh, per annum. 
Yeah. When I left, it had risen by 86%. 86, 86. Uh, almost double. Uh, that, almost what, double. what did you do? What did you do? We pushed the, the, the credentials of the UK. We talked to top business people. Uh, the single biggest investment in, in the United Kingdom from anywhere in the world in 2011 was from Thailand. Uh -huh. uh, That's an ASEAN country investing in the UK. In the UK. UK. And they invested in what in industry? Steel. steel. Yes, because th uh, Thailand needs steel, the region yes. needs steel. There's no reason on earth why mm. some of your top companies here yeah. cannot engage in the power sector, in, in ports, in, 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 UK? Airports, in, UK? in the UK. Uh -huh. uh, and also use the UK as a, as a as the place from which you then Jumping, uh, deal with uh, the rest of yeah, Europe. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, because, you know, you, the, if you look at brands of clothes, for example, there, there's every reason why people should go to Topshop or Debenhams or Marks and Spencer's buy their clothes. But there's no reason whatsoever for a company like Bench, yeah, or, Bench or, yeah. or a good Filipino brand to, to actually to, invest. To do yeah. exactly the same. You manufacture yeah. the clothes here, you've got great designers here. That's right. You partner with the UK, uh, you win, we win. And that's the sort of discussion I'm going to have with the, the businesses of all sorts of sizes. We should also remember that there are close to uh, a quarter of a million Filipinos living in the UK. More than 200,000, huh? 250,000. 250,000. And uh, sometimes people say, oh, these are OFWs. I said, we don't use that label in the UK. How are they called? They, they, these are either, they are either Filipinos who are living and working. Or in expats. The, or they are now British citizens. Mm. So they're like me. Uh, they're, they're and notice uh, some of them run your hotels, yep. the front desk. Uh, Absolutely, and, the, and make a huge contribution. Now yeah. these people have, uh, you know, uh, with, with, a, with anybody from the Philippines, if you sit down, you know, within five minutes they've got a business idea in their head. We want to tap into that, <laughs> yeah, that mindset. Yeah. Uh, and uh, this, the uh, UK is the only country in Europe with no language problem for English. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, yeah. we are so fortunate, uh, yeah. really fortunate. Yeah. Mm. Well, Britain has been around in the Philippines for more than 100 years. Huh? For at one point, uh, British colonizers came here. Yes. Yeah. This year, 2014, uh -huh. is the 250th anniversary of Britain leaving the Philippines. 214, 214, 250, 250. Quarter, century, quarter of what, how do you call that? Quarter of, uh, well, that's quarter of 1,000 years. <laughs> <laughs> quarter of a millennium or something. The Americans and the Japanese. No? Yes, uh, so, you know. So you came after the Spaniards, Dutch, and... Then yes, uh, it was a very opportunistic thing. What actually happened was that uh, because we were fighting the Spaniards in yeah, Europe yeah. and we could sense that there was, we might win, yeah. uh, slightly ahead of an order, the British Army in India yeah. set sail for the Philippines and yeah. arrived here mainly with Indian uh, soldiers. soldiers yeah. And some of them decided that they loved the Philippines so yeah. much they stayed here. Yeah. There's a community of uh, Indian, British yeah. origin Filipinos who are now integrated here. The Sikh, our original security people were Indians. Yeah, well, there you go. They were very good <laughs> at uh, guarding buildings. Yeah. yeah, but not the Mumbai. Yeah, the Mumbai, Mumbai are yeah. here to lend money and do other <laughs> kinds of things. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, how about, the Phili uh, about the England to the Philippines? Mm. What can you yeah. offer? Well, if you look at what this country needs, yeah. uh, mm. because uh, if you look at your infrastructure requirements, yeah. this yeah. country really very needs bad, to yeah. step up it's yes. road, rail networks, it's ports, it's airports. Now, these are all areas where we can make a contribution. Right. The original railway in the Philippines was British invested. Meralco? Not railway. Railway. way back. Oh, way back. Oh. You, know, you go back hundreds of years. Yeah. If you go back now, you'll find that there are traces of old railway lines. Yeah. When I went to La Union uh, over Christmas, I saw the remains of, of oh, the really? British railway really? line. You mean the railway line ran to up north? Up north, or the Lu yeah. in Luzon. In La Union is about uh, 14 hours drive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's quite, yeah. quite long now. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, if you look at airports, um, you know, the Mactan Airport is the first one that's going to be redeveloped. Now, there's a lot of British technology that can help yeah. air traffic control. Uh, when uh, Philippine Airlines flew to London for yeah. the first time after a gap of 15 after, years, yeah. we showed the Philippine Airlines how we operate Heathrow. Yeah. Uh, we were able to show that with just 12 people sitting in the control tower, 12 people. just 12 people, they were managing a 15-kilometer radius around Heathrow and managing takeoffs and landings every 30 seconds. Really? 12 people? No? 12 people. Every 30 seconds, something was taking off Heathrow and landing. Heathrow is one of the busiest it's airports yeah, in the, the world. The busiest airport in the world. International in the airport world. in the world. Yeah, and yet, with few people in technology, they, it's almost like they were playing a video yes, game. Ramon, they were pushing buttons with a finger. Ramon and Philippine Airlines were to put up the airport in Manila. Yeah, so, 
you know, we could we could work with that. We can work on master planning. We can work on if you look at the underground sy railway system we have. You know, it's when people from the Philippines visit the UK, they say it's so easy. We can get on a bus. We can get on the right. uh, on the tube. It's the same ticket. It's electronic. Yeah. You don't have to find unified, the right cash unified or change. system. Yeah. No? Yeah, yeah. Uh, now these are things that we can bring to the to the, yeah. to the Philippines. technology. Uh, if the you look at the jeepneys here, I'm not trying to replace jeepneys in the yeah. in, in in the Philippines. But wouldn't it be nicer if they were not uh, polluting the air? If, I agree. If you totally. Didn't have, if the driver didn't have a whole bunch of cash notes. But your in iconic taxis uh, look like jeepneys, no? There are version of yeah, the jeepneys. Yeah, yeah. They really ha have very capacious uh, capacity. Yes, yeah. uh, but for a very strange reason. I was surprised they can take into Balikbayan boxes. <laughs> the passenger well, put a taxi in the Balikbayan box. Yeah. yeah. Now, I tell you why our London taxis are the way they are. People yeah. don't remember this. In the olden days, uh, people used to wear those tall hats. A tall hat. And the rule was that oh. a gentleman with a hat did not have to take his hat off if he had to go inside a taxi. Oh, really? That's uh, why. Right. That's why they're yeah. big on the back. But we, in a way, it's had uh, a, a good effect now. Uh, so you should bring mm. that taxi here. Yeah. They, they do export those ah. the taxis. Ah. And uh, we have a joint venture now. That company is now a Chinese venture as well. Ah. So and some of them are manufactured in China. Some of them are manufactured in the UK. Uh, so transportation, technology. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, then, the, then energy, there's, energy, energy is big, energy, yeah, because yes. if, like, Shell has been here now yes. for 100 years, yeah. a, a British uh, uh, company which is headquartered in, in Holland, so it's yeah. a very funny European yeah, yeah. venture. Yeah. Uh, certainly a, a lot we can do in exploration and, uh, mm -hmm. and as you need to import more and more uh, gas. Yeah. How about the usual manufacturing thing, Ambassador? Manufacturing, I think, is the one area where I think Fil the Philippines needs to catch up yeah, with it in, yeah. the, in the neighborhood. Yeah. And you've got some good capability. The best example I can give you is Airbus. Airbus, yeah. The Air, if you look at an Airbus, if an Airbus has Rolls-Royce engines, 67% yeah. of it is British. The wings are British, the engines are British, yeah. the avionics, etc. But the kitchen galley, kitchen galley yeah. in the Airbus is made in the Philippines. In Cebu, made in the Philippines? In a joint they venture. Between, galleys. Yes, made in, as a joint venture between a British company and a Filipino company. Uh -huh. So when you see an Airbus flying, next time you look it's at where the food product. is coming from, there's some Filipino content. That's good. Yeah. Okay. So good you can manufacture. It's yeah. a question mm -hmm. of, of stepping that up. We've got some electronics companies here manufacturing. Yeah. Uh, I think it's to do with a number of things because you've got, you've got a good workforce here. Yeah, yeah. good. Uh, power, I think, needs to be something that needs to be more reliable, yeah. and sh costs of shipping goods. Very high. Yeah, very high. logistics. Uh, yeah. If these things, and these are not mm. impossible to solve, it just requires a strategy and, and a real desire to, yeah. to implement. And then I think you'll see uh, that this will be a very natural place mm. for people to. How about tourism, Ambassador? How is it doing? Well, we have something like 120,000 British tourists coming here, the largest contingent from the European Europe. Union. Largest, con there largest are more British the tourists than Italians or Spaniards? Yes. Uh, so we are already coming here in, in numbers. And yeah. I, um, I've been talking a lot with the Tourism Secretary Jimenez, and I, in fact, I'm seeing him next week. Yeah. We both have a common interest because, you know, when you have uh, airlines flying directly, yeah. they, they need to take tourists from the UK here and from Philippines into the UK. Yeah. And so for me, you know, it's something I want to, uh, to work with. The issue here is that you have fantastic natural resources, the islands, the, the, the hills, yeah. etc. Yeah. You've got some great hotels that are being developed. It's yeah. now, again, it's an issue of connectivity. You know, connectivity. How do you make the yeah. experience yes. of the tourist? How do you go to these islands? From, from the airport all the way to yeah. their yeah. destination. And a tourist like really that. should not have to think about how he's getting from A yeah. to B. They yes. should really... Should be seamless. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, that should just happen. Yes. Uh, and they should just enjoy themselves. I mean, my grandson was here for the first time uh, uh, how old is last he? week. He's three years old. Uh -huh. And I took him to Cebu. Yeah. And he had a great time. And uh -huh. in every photograph, you know, he could be an advert for It's More Fun. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> really? <Yeah. laughs> All right. We're going to continue this discussion. We're speaking with Ambassador Asif Ahmad. We'll be right back. for facilitating trade between the Philippines and the UK. You've got policies like anti-corruption and anti-red tape. 
How do you think that's for um, British companies investing, expanding their investments here? How do you see the Philippines in that in that light? Anti-corruption and anti-red tape. Yes, uh, we actually support the measures that the president and the government has yeah. actually taken here. And sometimes people say, "Oh, the newspapers talk so much about corruption. This is not a good thing." I say, actually, it's a good. I tell you, it's better than uh, other places. Because in other places, if there is corruption and the, there is no English media and the media don't cover the subject, then it's hidden. Yes. Whereas if this is out in the open, and it makes it easier for our businesses because we have a law in the UK, which mm -hmm. means that if you are corrupt outside the country, even if you use an agent, you're still uh, Ill illegal. Even if you use an agent. Yes. Uh... So we want clean hands business. And I'll tell you why. Because it's not just good for us, but you have to think of the Filipino consumer. Because if there's corruption, they're paying for it. Right. Yeah. Because whoever is bribing somebody has to win that money back. Yeah. So it, it, corruption is not a, a sort of a, where the victimless crime. Uh, every time you take a, a, an additional cost, the, the consumer at the other end, whether they're buying medicine, whether they're buying a, a burger, or whether they're buying a piece of electrical equipment, or using a public service, they're paying for corruption. Yeah. So just think of the, uh, the impact we would have. But it, the, the story is actually more positive. Um, in my second month here, I took a delegation of business people from here back to London. Uh, Secretary uh, Domingo and Secretary Purissima went, as well as uh, uh, others from, from the top the Filipino companies. Community, yes. And I remember five, six years ago when I was director for trade and investment, if you had a Philippines event, maybe 30, 40 people turned up to find out what was only, going on. Only, only. Yeah, this yeah. time, 250 people 200, turned up yeah. on the first event. And then when we did one for SMEs, which is the smallest company, 60 of them turned up. Yeah. Wow. Uh, it's a great interest. Yeah, yes. And they came back here to the Philippines. They've been, we've had about four business delegations here since then. Um, if you look at people opening up here, uh, if you look at the shopping malls now, River Island had to do a soft launch because yeah. it was in the middle of, uh, of Typhoon. Okay, Yolanda. Uh, yes. Yolanda. Uh, in a few uh, weeks, you'll see a new lifestyle company opening up here where people will be able to enjoy British food and drink. Uh, Marks and Spencers are stepping up their food offer. Yeah. Uh, there are lots of things going on, one after another. Mark is the most successful uh, British retail group to come here. No? Mm. We have many. Uh, yeah. Debenhams are here. The We've Debenham. got uh, Topshop is here. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, on, uh, on, on we're going to have a fashion uh, week coming up. A bit, uh, British Fashion Week. British Fashion Week. In the Philippines. In the Philippines. And uh, right up to the 9th of March, you'll see a whole range of events, which we started way back in October. So you'll see British fashion. You'll, you've already experiencing British, British food, food right now. Yes. Uh, we did British theatre here. We did British books and literacy. We've got mm -hmm. the education fair coming up where we promote British universities. So there are many other ways in which the British, if you like, commercial uh, capability and creativity is flourishing here. It's also working the other way. Mm -hmm. uh, we have already got one Filipino bank, uh, the Bank of the Philippine Islands, which is long established EPI. in London. It has a branch in London. Yeah, there's another Filipino bank which is about to open. In, in London. BDO. Uh, you have to ask them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so, you know, this is going mm, uh, yeah, yes. both you, you mentioned also SMEs coming over here. Yes. SMEs like? Well, SMEs who are coming here, some of them are just service providers. They, they, they are able to, uh, to do leadership training or human resources training. Yeah. You've got people who are coming here for their BPO requirements. You've got uh, companies who are ma manufacturing small electronic components here. And in some ways, the venture I talked about, uh, the engineering venture on Airbus, where they're making the galley of yes. the Airbus, that is a sort of a medium-sized company yeah. operating. Mm. It's not because supply chains nowadays are, right. are very complicated and very open. So, uh, Ambassador, fast growth, huge uh, population, more than 100 million. What else attracts the uh, British investor to the Philippines? I think it's also the regional story, because Our as ASEAN story. starts to integrate, if you're yeah. in one country, you can from here, you can, yeah, you can yeah. work around uh, the rest. So I think that's, uh, that's an important issue in, Integration it, in, next in, year, in no? itself. Yeah, yeah. And also, really, we're also betting, if you like, on the future of this country. Yeah. Even if it's not right now, if you get in early, yeah. you can move forward. Uh, uh, one issue we haven't talked about, which is actually a big commercial venture, is sport. Sport. Uh, Sports. And yeah. Br English Premier League is actually more Football. popular here than you would imagine. Really? Mm -hmm. But it's not live on television here, uh, yeah, unlike live. other countries in the yeah. region. Now, already, Chelsea Football Club has invested here with young kids. Um, Mar training young kids yeah, here. Manchester United is coming in with yeah. uh, Clear to uh, promote some football clinics. They come, it's very popular here. And the best team in the world, mm. Liverpool Football Club, yeah. uh, will be doing some more work here. Yeah. Mm. So as, as 
that will slowly become another, but we are here, we're talking about longer term, that slowly the Filipinos will say basketball is great, yeah. but think how but, much so more fun. Football attracts yeah. a greater audience in Europe than in America, than basketball in America. Actually, globally, yeah. e even, globally. In, e even in the United States, yeah. the, the, the number of, of people playing football exceeds baseball and, uh, soc and uh, American football, uh -huh. uh, but particularly with women. Yeah. Uh, soccer in, amongst women as players in, in the U.S. is very, very popular. It's a global uh, sport. Yeah, and yeah. You'll see in the World Cup um, that the whole world will be watching. One of the greatest players in football in the world it was a Filipino in the so, 1930s. Yeah. You surprised me. Yeah. Well, there you the go. In the 1930s, yeah. we, should we should find out yeah. his biography and yeah. promote it. His average <laughs> goal was two, two goals per game. That's good enough for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he came from Bacolod. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one, one problem here with football is quite an elitist game. Only the uh, elite uh, schools offer it as a sport. But that's where the whole thing is wrong, you see. It's so wrong, huh? I tell you why it's wrong. Is that all you need to play football is the ball. Yeah, ball, yeah. And you can and play anywhere. You can field. play in the streets. You play in the open field. I, was, I was mentioning the best team in the world, Liverpool Football Club. It's number one striker right now. He's a Uruguayan called Luis Suarez. Yeah. He's a street kid. Yeah. Street he kid, huh? From Uruguay. He learned his football kicking the ball around in the streets. Yeah. Now he's one of the top goal yeah. scorers in the world. There's no reason on earth why you can't have the next Messi coming yeah, from Messi, the streets yeah. of, yeah. of Taguig. Or Ronaldo. Right. And we are actually working with, uh, with a campaign here. It's called the MBC Cup where we're adopting teams from around uh, the, oh, uh, nice. the Metro Manila. Yeah. Yeah. And they're going to play with each other. And yeah. we're adopting a team in Taguig. And in football, it's one game where the Filipino can excel because there's no height problem exactly. uh, or disadvantage. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, uh, our kids are very good runners. <laughs> they, are, they hustle quite a lot, <laughs> especially those in the squatter areas. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think there's a, every possibility. Because height is not the issue. It's the ability of how mobile you are and what you yeah, actually do. Yeah. So no, and, uh, I, I think uh, especially in the uh, in central Philippines, the South Cebu, uh, the kids there are corn-fed, and they are better <laughs> built, yeah, and stamina. Yeah, no kidding. Among the best players in basketball are corn-fed players from Cebu. Really? Yeah. You know, I've only heard about corn-fed chicken. <laughs> I've not heard like about like corn-fed. You sound like meat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Corn-fed yeah. meat. <laughs> Excellent. So uh, football. Uh, how about theater? You mentioned theater. Yes. Uh, the theater is very popular uh, in Manila. It is. Yeah. What we did was... Uh, uh, something the very problem is pricing is very high. Yes. What we did was we made it very accessible. Yeah. We've got a, a venture in the UK called National Theatre Live, yeah. which is where a theater is recorded by professional television companies with very good interactive TV. Yeah. Yeah. And we took Macbeth yeah. and showed it at the SM Aura here in yeah. the cinema. And it was yeah. so full, we had to open up the, uh, another theater. Really? Macbeth? Uh, yeah. And since we showed Macbeth here, I've had people... Uh, on Twitter and others saying, when are you going to bring more theater? Yeah. More, more. And the best... The musicals, uh, yeah. Uh, the best comment I heard was in, in Tagalog. So somebody actually said, oh, magandang magandang nunit uh, masakit sa ulo. <laughs> because <laughs> he was uh, trying to understand yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the language, which yeah. was complicated. But they, they love it. They, want, they said, you know, when can we have it? Uh, and what we want to do is, instead of the government funding this and doing it, we want to make it a commercial venture so that the theaters yeah. here yeah. will see that British theatre is a commercial product. You know, you have right now the Broadway production of Wicked going on. Yes. So there's, there's a lot of interest here. Yes, yes. Um, and when singers tour here, you know, they, they get a lot of followers. Yeah. So I, I see no reason why Everyone this... Everyone yeah, comes to the Philippines, yeah. really. Yes. And I notice, uh, Ambassador, when a uh, uh, play is played, uh, performed here, the uh, performers are better than those in London. Because I have a feeling that those in London, left behind, are just second or third stringers. No, I would have to disagree with you. Uh, I disagree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think there, that there's a Especially lot. Especially the singing. Oh no. Okay. Singing. When it comes to singing, you have this is one of your greatest talents here. Yeah, so yeah. I, I, w I will not argue with you that, yeah. that, that you have great Filipino yeah. singers. But I think you know we have also some great actors yeah, in the UK. Yeah, yeah. And uh, if I said to the, my audience today that you know maybe one day One Direction will come here, yeah. uh, people will go mad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, we're going to continue this discussion. We'll be right back. You're watching the news.
Ambassador, you're very savvy in social networking. Is that intentional? You have a Twitter account? Yeah, I have a Twitter account, uh, which is uh, Asif A. Ahmed. Uh, somebody else took Asif Ahmed, so I couldn't uh, have that one. <laughs> uh, I tell you what, I did it when I went to Thailand as ambassador, because I, mm. I, was, I was rushed there because of the sudden departure of the previous yeah. ambassador. So I thought, well, in a short period, how do you maximize impact? And Twitter was a very good and fast way of, of doing it because it's, it's direct, it's personal, and people have realized that it's me doing it. I haven't got some member of staff who's sitting there writing the It really is actually it's, you. It's me, doing, totally. Yeah. And most of the time I reply, if I can. Are you replying? Huh? Um, personally, I try. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it gets a little bit busy, so you, you, yeah. you drop how out for it. How many tweets do you do a day? Oh, I don't know, maybe 20, 30. 20, really? that's quite a volume. Huh? Yeah. Depends on what's yeah, going on. And, yeah. and sometimes it's not serious. You know, mm. the, you know, if you have a one-dimensional thing where I'm just talking about trade, investment, yeah, all yeah, the important yeah. things, that's okay, but that yeah. only reaches a certain audience. But sometimes, you know, when I, I went and saw um, uh, Vice Gunda's film in, in you, Dallas, you I did. I did. <laughs> and I put that out on Twitter, and half the people thought it was, I was joking completely. Yeah. And I said, no, I can tell you what happened in the story and what my favorite scene was. You uh, really understood the film? Yes, I did, all of it. That's amazing. That's I, I, I saw a, a, your tweet on your um, grandson um, yes. donning a Spider-Man outfit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ambassador, security services. Yes. You have among the best, no? James Bond, M1, M16 <laughs> or M1? You have among the best. No? British intelligence is top rate. No, we think it's important to know what's going on around the world. Yeah. Uh, no, why, do you offer it? why don't you offer it in the Philippines? <laughs> We have security problems. Yeah? No, I think that there's a lot of security cooperation that happens between oh, yeah, the UK are, yeah. and uh, you know we've we've taken many of your people from the MB, NBI and others yeah. uh, from uh, for they've, courses. Yeah. they've gone for courses in the UK. They've looked at our CCTV, etc. So no, there you know in, in because we have some common issues that we are, yeah. we are worried about. We are worried about uh, human trafficking. We yeah. are worried about yes. child sex offenders, yeah, and yeah. you need a lot of intelligence yeah. work to find these people. There are threats from uh, terrorist groups and others where you need to cooperate mm -hmm. with uh, our authorities and agencies here. So no, that we can do a, a, a lot of work in, in, uh, yeah. in that area. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we're also very good at a different kind of security, uh, which is uh, through the guard forces and the movement of cash. Yeah, uh, uh, A British company here, is G4S, is very active. Uh, mm. very, how about uh, the training of journalists? Yes, right yeah. now we, uh, we British journalism is classic. Yes, uh, of yeah. course, among the best, uh, if not the best. Absolutely, uh, they're challenging as well, which yeah. is which is how free yeah. free media should operate. We have a thing called the Chevening Scholarship Program, which is uh, what's how they call che it? Scholarship. Uh -huh. It's a government scholarship program which is helped and expanded by contributors. So uh, Filipino companies and British companies make us. Uh, expand the program. Yeah. And this last year, we sent about 11 scholars, uh, of, 11. of which one of them is a, j a journalist. Uh -huh. uh, there are people on, on rival channels here uh, who have had the experience of uh, British scholarship the UK in journalism. In journalism, there's yeah. somebody there right now who actually follows me on Twitter. Who, so I keep on finding out how he's doing. Yeah. Yeah. And every now and then, he also tells me he's traveling and having fun around the UK as well. So I said, "Are you working? And are you we, we paid for you to go there." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Ambassador, one of the things that you're, I, I think you're, you're proud of also is in the uh, participation in peace, yes. making it in the now. Tell yes. us about that. Is your, your this is a very personal story for me as well yes. as a story in the Philippines. Right. Um, when the last peace process broke down because it was overruled by the, the Supreme, um, Court. Supreme Court, I was the regional head for ASEAN and this, this part of the world. It was on, I remember it was a July, uh, I think it was the 27th or yeah. of July or thereabouts when the whole thing collapsed. Mm. And I thought, what a shame that after so much work it had collapsed. And then I thought, uh, I wonder if the UK could help in some way. But before I opened my mouth, I thought I'd better check with my minister. And I put a proposal to him that, you know, using classic diplomacy, is this something that we would be want? And he said, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Mm. We then went to Malaysia, who were the, in, in part of the process. And then it was presented here to the former president and then to the candidates who were all present saying, should you win? Is this something that you would welcome in terms of British participation? The reason why we felt we could help was because of our own troubles in Northern Ireland mm. uh, and the way in which we have taken an armed conflict yeah. and people who were killing each other before now yes. sit and govern together. And that was a big journey to, to make. And by being there in the background, by talking to all sides, uh, 
we were able to sustain this thing. I came to the Philippines at the time of the Maguindanao massacre, mm -hmm. and I was on record here saying the, the events like this will, will not throw us off course. We will sustain our engagement. Yesterday, I went to see uh, Secretary uh, Ging Deles to say, up, yeah. how, how, how can we help? And she just simply said, carry on doing what you're doing. Uh, support what's going on, but leave in the hands of the Philippines and the Filipino community. And what I also say to the Muslim community in the Philippines yes. is that it's not just a question of being as good an administrator as you possibly can when you assume authority, but to be an example for the whole world. To say that this is the one place where this community can actually flourish. And, and, and it's a problem of governance after the peace, after the war. Yes, yeah. to set a new standard. Yeah. I, my message to the other Filipinos is to say that this is good for all of you because the reputation of your country Nobody's going to look at the detail that the problem is only in one area or yeah. it's, it's uh, a few people who are yeah. radical. Mm. They will simply say, terrible. if there's trouble there, let's look somewhere else. 98% right. of the budget of the ARMM is personnel, wages, which means mainly corruption. Well, I think it's a public administration yeah. as a whole needs to be about what happens on the ground. Yeah. Are more people being educated? Do more people have medical yeah. facilities? Yeah. Uh, are, is, are there uh, t old age uh, concerns being yeah, met. Yeah. Is there security when they drive from A yeah, to B? Yeah. If you fix those things, you, you, you actually t occupy the space that the radicals occupy because if they have no cause, uh, they, they can't really go yeah. into that space. But I would also say to everybody, have, have a, a sense of national identity which is diverse. You know, by all means, celebrate everything you would as, as, as a majority community, but understand mm -hmm. that you have such richness in this country, uh, north to south. You can go right from the top of the, of the country to the bottom. Yeah. And if you look at other examples, you know, the countries that embrace diversity uh, actually do better. Uh, you look at the President of the United States today. Yeah. Mm. If you look at uh, the UK, where we have uh, members of the cabinet, we've had members of the armed forces, we've got people in theater, we've got all over the place where, where you see a very diverse face of, of the United Kingdom. Uh, you spoke about Ireland. Uh, why is there a need to get a separate visa for Ireland and the other? Uh countries uh, we have, yeah, The European Union as a whole yeah. uh, has a, a situation where we don't always follow everything yeah. at the same time. We don't have the yeah. same currency. And you, don't, you don't recognize Shenzhen, no? Yes. We decided that we wanted to control our borders yeah. in a different way, yeah. which is our, our right to do so. Yeah. Uh, and also your currency. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Which, in our view, was the right decision. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Looking back now, yeah. Yeah. Because the yeah. Uh, sterling is, yeah. is doing well. It's yeah. more, it's our economic policy is tied to it's our... It's stronger than the Swiss currency, no? Not, no. Well, it depends. I mean, Switzerland has a very different sort of economy. Yeah, but yeah. for us, what was important was that our, our financial policy yeah. on taxation, on yeah. spending, on et cetera, needed yeah. to be in line with our currency policy. Yeah. And it's easy to manage if you have total yeah. control. Yeah. So that's really the setup. You get a separate visa for Ireland, like that. Yes. But people say some of oh, you know, the, 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 the UK visa is expensive or whatever. But if yeah, you take it's very the, expensive. Yeah, but yeah. if you take the whole package, the airfare, the hotels, the Still e everything else is a very small element. Yeah, People yeah. will spend more on a handbag yeah. in, yeah, in Oxford Street than yeah. on our visa. That's <laughs> true, yeah. And your bargains at uh, Portobello are very good, you know, the antiques. Yeah. Yes, in fact, yeah. you, can, you, can, you can bargain in the UK as well as uh, yeah, in as Paris. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I have a impression that prices sometimes are cheaper in London than in Paris, especially for the local products. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we want to be competitive. Yeah. All right, we're going to cut to a short break. You're watching Business. We'll be right back. Ambassador Sip Ahmad, you have been around since July last year. What is the thing that uh, irritates you most in the Philippines? Traffic? 
No, actually, I, I served in Bangkok, and even London traffic is getting right. to be quite right. difficult. Yeah. To be honest with you, this is this. If I wanted an easy life with no challenges and no difficulties, yeah. I, would have been, I would have been sitting in yeah. Switzerland or somewhere, enjoying the mountain <laughs> air yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and uh, doing sort of what I call soft yeah. diplomacy. Because there are so many things one could achieve here on trade, on, uh, yeah. uh, you know, we haven't even talked about the 15,000 British people who live here. 15,000. Yeah. 15,000. 15, 15, 15, yeah. uh, you know, the, by and large, they're happy people, but you know, when there are challenges, we have yeah. to look after them, whether there's a natural disaster yeah. or something yeah. that happens to them personally. So if, you know, if, if, if I didn't have a busy schedule and things to do, uh, my goodness me, I would be really disappointed. Yeah. So yeah. That, if, I was, if, I was, if in that sense, I'm not disappointed. So at the all. answer is none. No, because this is the, really the job of a diplomat. Mm. Yeah. You want to yeah. grapple with these issues. You want to yeah. solve them. But yeah. what I really like is to be able to tick things off and say, okay, yeah. you know, this is done. That's done. That's done. And that, that's why we want to congratulate you for being nominated as a, one of the civil servants. That was so, so by, nice. By the yeah, British was, Muslim. Yes, the, yeah. the committee there decided to nominate me as the, the civil servant of the year, yes. which is... Uh, I said this is a reflection on the excellent team that I have. I only yeah. represent the top of the yeah. embassy. Yeah. Uh, you know, so if, if they're doing well, I look good. And if they make a mistake, it's mine. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, when will you get the final uh, verdict? We're, we're, we're waiting for the result. Oh, but waiting. to be honest with you, I'm already happy. Uh -huh. uh, uh, because it means that the work yeah, that we're doing here is... You have to meet a higher there. bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what is the outlook for UK-Philippine uh, relations, Ambassador? Well, we are working with three priority areas, yeah. which we've, some of which we've talked about. We, mutual prosperity. We want the UK yeah, and the Philippines prosperity. to gain economically through our interaction. Yeah. We want to make sure that there is security here yeah. in your neighborhood yeah. and within the country. Yeah. Because if you're secure, we are secure. Yes. And some of the security issues are global. Yeah. Uh, you know, we talked about child trafficking and yeah. exploitation. This is a global problem. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we regard that as a threat to the social well-being of this country and ours. Mm -hmm. And then we talk about the welfare of our citizens. Uh, we want make, to make sure that every Filipino who visits the UK is happy, that the Filipinos who we regard as British really play a full part. Yeah. I want. To, an ambassador for, who's of Filipino origin representing the UK. Oh, really? Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, um, uh, and I then want to make sure that every British citizen living here is having a fulfilling life and that their issues are small uh, and that they, they continue to enjoy yeah. this great country. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Ambassador. And we are thankful to London for sending you here because I find out that you are a Filipino at heart. Mabuhay and maraming salamat. Thank you. More power to you, Ambassador. All right, you watch another episode of Biz News. I'm Elizabeth Lee, together with Tony Lopez. See us every Monday at 7 p.m. Thanks for joining us. Have a good night. God bless.